In the opening scene, we see a young woman, Jessica Murdoch, who is on the run. She cautiously makes her way towards her home while trying to avoid detection. With a bloodied mark on her face, it seems that she was involved in some sort of a physical altercation. As soon as Jessica arrives home, she cleans her face and then looks at her wedding ring. Just then, she notices some armed intruders breaking into her place. In a desperate bid to avoid being caught, she quickly escapes from the window. Upon walking through the streets for a while, Jessica comes across a parked wagon. She secretly hides hides in it and finally flees the city. The following morning, Jessica wakes up as the wagon comes to a stop near a grocery store. As the driver steps away, she also gets off the vehicle, steals some food and a map, and heads towards the woods. After walking all day, she comes across a ranch where she decides to spend the night. Early the next morning, Jessica tries to steal some more food for the rest of her journey, but she is confronted by an elderly ranch owner, Frank Lerner. But instead of reprimanding her, he invites her inside for breakfast. It appears that he feels bad seeing her troubled state. After a while, when Jessica is served some food, she devours it as if she has been starving for days. In the midst of this, Frank's wife Jeannie asks how she ended up here. Jessica, who remains apprehensive, lies that she is traveling to the north. Frank innocently believes her and even offers to drive her to her destination. We then cut to an ace fixer and tracker, Elsa Gray, who is assigned by our company chief, Raymond Reed, to locate and capture Jessica. It appears that Elsa has been a manhunter for a long time. Thankless job that some boss got to do it. Due to this undercover job, she has not been able to afford the time or space to maintain any relationships. She doesn't take vacations either, as she is way too absorbed in her work to have a life of her own. But now, Elsa has been diagnosed with ALS. Despite her best efforts to hide the deteriorating effects of the ailment from her colleagues, the symptoms are unmissable. Her limbs suddenly stop functioning time and again, complicating her daily life and work. Elsa often takes counsel from an online help group as well as from the patient who are living with similar ailments. However, a sense of hollowness seems to have started plaguing her mind already. For an active, on-the-field manhunter like her, the gradual decay of physical and mental faculties is a fate worse than death. During one of her sessions, the counselor advises Elsa to talk to her family members, but she responds that nobody is in touch with her. Upon hearing the depressing tone in her voice, a fellow patient asks if she is thinking of committing the unthinkable, to which the latter affirms. The patient then tries to comfort her, saying that misery is powerful, but so is acceptance. Meanwhile, Frank drives Jessica towards the north in his truck. After a whole day of driving, the road ends at a certain point, so Jessica decides to walk onwards towards the Canadian border. Before departing, the elderly man provides her with a bag full of food and clothes, also offering her to come back to them if she needs any help. Jessica is extremely grateful for his help, so she wholeheartedly thanks him before continuing her journey. After walking for several hours, she stops somewhere in the woods in order to spend the night. The next morning, Jessica continues walking and eventually arrives at a small border town. She then enters a local bar, where she talks to the owner, Molly Presser, about work availability. The latter initially says that there's no vacancy, but when Jessica insists, she provides her with a cleaning job at the bar. Later that evening, Jessica is doing the dishes when Molly comes to talk to her. Seeing the ring on her finger, Molly asks her if she is married. In response, Jessica claims that it was given to her by her boyfriend. As their conversation unfolds, Molly misinterprets Jessica's wish to start a new life as an effort to move move away from her boyfriend, as she herself has been the victim of an abusive relationship in the past. After work, the two new friends exit the bar. While walking together, Molly asks where Jessica will be staying, to which the latter replies that she will find a motel. Hearing this, the kind owner invites Jessica to her place. Life sure is easy to navigate when you're attractive. On the other hand, Elsa is seen talking on the phone with her colleague Vince, both trying to find a lead to Jessica. Turns out the duo has been working together for many years, and Vince has actually spent more of his time with Elsa than with his wife, but despite their best efforts, they are still not able to locate Jessica. Elsa is later called by Raymond, who pressures her to work faster. He asserts that they can't let Jessica cross the border at any cost. The scene then flashes back to the past, depicting an evening from when Jessica and her boyfriend Ian were camping in the middle of the forest. She loves the forest. While they were enjoying the bonfire, a dog showed up. Despite Ian's warning against touching it, Jessica proceeded to pet the dog and even cuddled with it while sleeping. The following morning, the couple woke up to find several red spots on Ian's body, as well as on Jessica's foot. Here, it is revealed that the earlier dog was carrying a strain of Ebola virus. <laughs> 
You have to be kidding me. Which got transferred to them. This is the reason why the authorities are trying to capture Jessica as soon as possible, before she inadvertently triggers an outbreak. As the flashback continues, Ian's condition worsened rapidly, with red spots on his skin turning into bloody patches. Alarmed, Jessica called an ambulance, but instead of a hospital, they were taken to a remote research facility. There, Jessica was confined to a cell, while Ian was taken to a lab room for experimentation. In a desperate bid to escape, Jessica devised a plan. She broke the cell's light bulb and waited for a guard. As soon as he entered, she attacked him with a sharp glass shard and rushed to find Ian. Soon after, she discovered him in a near zombified state. Before she could get to him, the emergency alarm went off. This left Jessica with no choice but to escape alone, leaving her boyfriend to die. Back in the present, Elsa receives a call from one of her coworkers, informing her about the ranch where Jessica had stayed. She then drives towards the same to find any potential clues. Upon arriving at the location, Elsa dons a hazmat suit and enters the premises. As she looks around, she finds the place in a messed up state, with blood in the sink. Not long after, she notices Jeannie, so she quickly makes her way out. Elsa follows her to the shed, where she is unexpectedly ambushed by Frank and Jeannie, who have now turned into zombie-like beings. They violently charged towards Elsa, but the latter fortunately has a firearm with her, which she uses in her defense. In the aftermath of this event, Elsa calls Raymond and demands to know what is going on. At this point, he finally reveals about Adian Gen, a tech conglomerate which was experimenting on a particular virus in collaboration with the US government. The earlier dog was its test subject and the carrier of the virus, but unfortunately, the dog escaped the facility and came into contact with Ian and Jessica. After that, the virus continued to get transferred and mutated in an inexplicable way. This means that she is not showing any signs of illness. However, she is not aware of the danger and has been inadvertently spreading the virus to everyone whom she comes into contact with. According to Raymond, the oblivious Jessica is escaping because she believes the authorities suspect her of murder. This is the reason why she is heading towards the border township in order to escape the US jurisdiction. Upon realizing the seriousness of the case, Elsa confesses about her ALS diagnosis, claiming that she is no longer fit for this job. Much to her surprise, Raymond is well aware about her illness. Furthermore, he admits that he deliberately chose her for this case, as he believes that someone with a terminal disease has nothing more to lose anyway. He still instructs her to capture Jessica, dead or alive, so that they can prevent the potential outbreak. Later on, Elsa receives a video message from one of her colleagues, in which Jessica has been spotted. As a result, she wastes no time in driving towards the border town. In the meantime, Jessica wakes up in the morning and decides to go for a walk before leaving she knocks on Molly's room door, asking if she wants to join her. But when she doesn't get any response, she believes that Molly is still asleep and goes out alone. In reality, Jessica has unintentionally transferred the virus to Molly, and thus, she is suffering inside the room. Later, while Jessica wanders around the street, she is unexpectedly spotted by Elsa. Sensing the imminent threat, she immediately runs away. Elsa tries to chase her, but her ailment prevents her from doing so. Jessica then returns back to Molly's place and starts packing her belongings to leave. Amidst this, she hears hears an unusual noise from Molly's room, so she goes upstairs to check. As soon as she opens the door, she is startled by a horrific sight, a blood-covered and zombified version of Molly. The zombie then suddenly comes to life and charges towards Jessica. In a desperate attempt to save herself, Jessica grabs a pan and reluctantly beats her friend to death. Following <laughs> God, is Jessica the bad guy here? Following this, she sits beside Molly's body and cries her heart out. At this point in time, she realizes that something is seriously wrong with her, as the people around her are dying. In addition, she discovers that her hair has started to fall out as well. Oh God, that's even worse. Sometime later, Elsa tracks Jessica down and holds her at gunpoint. She then reveals the entire predicament, explaining how she has been spreading the deadly virus to the people. By this point in time, Jessica is already showing signs of viral infection but unlike other victims, she is able to retain her mental abilities. Elsa interprets this as a hopeful sign and tries to persuade her to turn herself in. However, the latter refuses to comply and proceeds to flee. Despite repeated warnings from Elsa, Jessica pleads for her life and continues to run. Left with no other choice, Elsa aims the gun and shoots her down. In her final moments, Jessica expresses that she just wanted to see the world and didn't want things to end the way they did. Hearing this, Elsa empathizes with her deeply. She then shows kindness to a dying Jessica by holding her hands. Why would she, what? However, she forgets that she has removed the face cover of her hazmat suit. After Jessica's death, all crucial information, surveillance footage, and evidence are wiped off as if they had never existed. In the final scene, Elsa is visited by her ALS counselor, who 
who explains to her about the ways that she can keep a positive outlook despite her present degrading condition. While offering this consolation, the counselor holds her hand, causing him to cough uncontrollably. Elsa is shaken from her distracted mind as she realizes that she is another asymptomatic carrier of the virus. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.